Okay, years ago I bought a <laughs> Ridgeline tow package because the Ridgeline, the leather version, doesn't come with the tow package. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I recorded the the install and the audio was totally messed up. So I'm just going to ramble here. One of the reasons that I ordered the uh, OEM package is actually this piece right here. Um, in fact, you, you, you have two pieces. You have uh, this hookup and pigtail, which actually wires into the factory system. So you don't, you don't need to do anything but plug it in, basically. And then there's a controller that goes into the front of the vehicle under the dash that uh, adds additional relays uh, and additional fuses under the hood to ensure that you are properly powering everything, such as a brake system for the trailer and so forth. Um, you also get both style of of uh, trailer hookups. So um, the only caveats I heard is that some of these older systems, the middle pin, which I think is the reverse light, is not correctly hooked up. And then there's also another thing where um, you have two connectors, which we'll see in a second, that are in the ridge line. Mine's a 2006. And even in the instructions, they say you may not have this four pin connector, uh, depending on the year. And I'm not sure exactly what it does. Uh, I had it, so meh. Anyway, um, yeah, that's why I went with the factory system. I'm pretty sure I spent uh, close to 300 bucks. I spent a little bit of time trying to find a used system off a pilot or anything else, you know, out of junkyards. But uh, at the time, they just weren't around. But $300, I felt was worth it. Um, you get this parts list. In my case, everything was already put together, and I was missing a relay. So uh, there's also a, a cover on the fuse that <clears throat> shows the location and values of the new fuses. And my kit didn't come with that, which kind of pissed me off. So, you know, it was an eBay order and, uh, it, you know, it's all real stuff, but, but that's what happened. So, um, so this is what the control unit ends up looking like and you have two relays that are actually going to go in there and then there's a final relay that goes in the uh, kick panel sort of up in this area so getting into the dash was not hard um, but oh my god being able to find the connectors and and <laughs> it, it's tight under there and I you know, I even considered taking out my seat. Uh, I'm an old man. Um, you, you definitely are going to want to disconnect your battery before you start. Um, the instructions say, in particular, you could short out your VTM system, which is like your rear uh, four-wheel drive system, I think. Um, so just don't be lazy. Disconnect your battery. Deal with it. You know, I often get lazy, but this is definitely a big change in the electrical system. So, mm, looks like I'm getting ready to <laughs> try to figure out how I'm going to shrink and then crawl up in the dash. Um, the dash popped out pretty easily. Um, again, that's in the instructions, and I, I think I just gave it a good good pull and each tab pulled out I didn't break a single thing and here I'm just verifying the stuff that's where those relays go and they were I don't know the directions were weird and like I said mine kind of came put together and I think I actually ended up putting one component 
together backwards, but but we'll we'll see how it should look once it's installed. Uh, that's the fuse I bought, or the relay I bought. So I was just making sure it was the same. Yep, push those guys in, and then <sighs> things and stuff. I still don't exactly know what this does. <laughs> this control unit, I assume it does something to talk to the brake controller. Those are the two connectors that we're going to go digging for. And then the, uh, the relays end up on here. And they just push fit on there. Okay, so here's a view under the dash. So we've got the steering column right here. Um, this the obviously the driver's side. That's the outside of the car over here, and right here is where the connectors are. And I think one's here and one's above it, and they're both, you know, they're wrapped in blue tape. So you pretty much just have to do what you can, or get one of your children or something to climb up in there. I think, yeah, I thought about going through the dash. The uh, It's really easy to take apart the dash, but no, they, there's no access from that area. So I gave up on that. That is the position you're going to want to be in to be able to see everything. And uh, yeah, so there's the connectors freed up. And again, they were hard. They were hard to find. I'm not going to lie. But just keep looking. Uh, some other silly comment. There we go. So connectors are freed up. I think this is where it actually mounts. I think that's where it actually mounts. And uh, it's directly below the OBD2 connector. I don't know what I'm going on about here because we're just staring at connectors. Probably just the fact that I can't get in there. And of course, you're going to bleed too. Everything is sharp. Everything is sharp. So uh, I guess maybe wear gloves. Uh, things and stuff. Okay, well, there it is installed. So there's a a, you know, a welded on bolt right here. So you just thread it in. And then there's a little lock thing over here that goes in the other hole. So you pretty much just place it there. I think I placed it. Then I realized that uh, this connector that I pushed in was on the wrong side. So I had to move it to the other side. And then with one hand, I was able to get the connectors plugged in. So unlike my other or previous picture of this, uh, I had to move that connector to the other side. <clears throat> I can say it a, w one other way. I had to move the connector. Uh, everything fit together nicely, though, and it was easy. And uh, I think it took me 50 minutes, and I think I could do it in five. <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm slow. There we go. So there's the money shot. You can see the OBD2 connector right here. And then directly above it, that's where all your new controller is going to go. Or whatever the hell that thing is. And of course, the outside of the car is down in this direction. So here I'm trying to get a look at the group of... Uh, there's a you know a bundle of relays right where I'm pointing, and the instructions are going to tell you to get that undone. Um, so again, this is the outside of the car here. So the way that you end up doing that is uh, what's going on here. I was ruining my seat. I was putting footprints on. The ceiling, yeah, all kinds of, just use the position that I was in last. I, I thought I could hang down there. Um, yeah, so going in from the side here, the goal is just to lift that group 
of uh, relays off of a little a little pin there. It looks a lot like the way the relays going on to the the controller went on there, and uh, yeah, so it looks like this. My screwdriver didn't line up exactly like that, but just you'll see the little tab, and you literally just lift that off. It it will lift off. I, I don't even think I had to press in this little pin. There's a little, I don't know what you call it. And yeah, so that all worked. And then somehow I got, I used one hand to hold thing, and then I used the other same hand. You can only fit one hand in there. So you just you just got to get those relays in. There we go. I'm explaining how I used one hand, and then I used my other that hand. It's a little tight. It is not comfortable. And I'm I'm like five eleven, and pretty pretty some semi flexible. Uh. Who the hell knows what I'm blabbing about? I don't know where all those fuses go yet. Just wanted to make sure I had all the parts in. And looks like we're going after the rear pigtail. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You've got a heat shield. And uh, just undo the heat shield. And, and you can pull it out in this direction and get it out of your way. Um, you also have to push off these exhaust hangers. I got lucky. <laughs> I was able to just push them off with my super thumbs. That usually is not the case. Um, I'm doing a one person install. So this thing is super heavy. It's just awkward. You don't want to get under it. Um, so I can show you what I did. And uh, then for each of the bolts, you've got essentially uh, three bolts on this side, two bolts in the middle, and then three bolts on the outside. And they give you a torque spec for each one and the order in which you do it. And I, I think, I think I was smart and I was like, okay, I'm going to torque the outside, but I, I can't remember. I did it in the wrong way, but. Uh, 59 foot-pounds on the outside and then uh, what was that 34 foot-pounds on the two in the in the middle and they've all they've got washers and lock washers yeah there's instructions there's more instructions and your kit should come with these instructions. I don't know what I'm going on about. Yeah, and then here you really do. You get a new cover with a new, you know, positional information of where the fuse is going. Uh, I didn't have that, so I ended up just putting this sheet of paper that at least shows you each fuse that is going in here. And I just put that in my glove box with you know all the other car shit so that's the only piece of paper I kept from this install um, oh and if you didn't know it the ridge line has a lift point in the center rear in the center front and I, I actually love this some of the thoughtfulness about the ridge line uh, one of them is you can center jack that and get the entire rear end on jacks and then run around the front and there's another lift point so you can lift the front and get the front on jacks and that's how I rotate tires so it's super easy uh, as compared to some cars which just don't have a center lifting point for whatever reason um, here I'm pointing out if you look in your ridge line uh, more than likely these are all worn out um, th this is the uh, Damn it! It's the link for the sway bar, and they're kind of shitty, and they wear out quickly and just come undone. So if you ever hear a noise in the back, 
or the front because <laughs> they're all going to be worn out uh, and and come undone. I didn't probably get a really good picture of this, but the the rubber piece is supposed to be pushed into the piece that I'm moving. And you can kind of see how it splats out. It's kind of like one molded piece. They are complete junk and will come undone. So I'm I'm going to replace all mine. And uh, it's, you know, it's certainly a performance issue uh, for driving. You know, it's not the end of the world, but uh, but just if you ever hear a clunk or if you're ever under your car, check those because they're probably, they're probably bad. And I'm not going to buy OEM for that. I'm going to get something aftermarket or just make one. So I'm probably rambling about that a bunch. Uh, here's the view of the holes, and I I screwed up really bad, uh, really badly, by not chasing them with a proper. Um, you, you really should get a proper. Uh, what am I trying to say? Thread cutter. <laughs> To chase those holes. Also, some people reported getting the wrong size bolts. Um, yeah, because you can see my my threads don't even look that bad. I think I got the wrong size bolts, and I'm an idiot. And I crammed them in there and probably cross threaded the bolt uh, or the the nut that's welded in here. And and you don't want to do that. So make sure you've got the right bolts thread them in there if you have to chase this thread with the the proper uh, I can't think of the words just go buy the proper thread cutter <laughs> tool and uh, and chase those threads because I'm still on the fence all I know is my bolt or the actual bolt was hard and it was clean and it came out clean and it didn't look cross threaded. Um, I actually couldn't get a good look at those bolts. And uh, anyway, they went in horribly, uh, but I was able to get them torqued to spec. And anyway, other people were more unlucky and broke off this inner, you know, uh, nut that is welded to the chassis. And you don't want to do that. So don't be like me. Verify that you've got the right nuts and make sure, or the, the right bolts, and make sure that they they thread in safely. I, I somehow, that, that was a nightmare, and I, I sort of wish I'd known that before I started. You know, obviously I checked them, and they felt pretty good, but as I got in there, something was bad, and... I really, I should have spent more time verifying that because I could have been super unlucky. Uh, but for me, it just happened to work out. I don't know what I'm rambling about here, so I'm just going to skip over this. All right. Uh, the next piece of the instructions, I, this is the uh, driver rear side of the car again. And this connector is covered with a thingy. and uh, And I think pretty much... We're gonna we're gonna pull it out, and it it really doesn't feel like it's gonna come out of there, but it is taped up. You can see that fresh tape that just came undone. Um, it truly is taped up. Uh, ultimately, it's going to slot into I think this hole. I think I was thinking it would go in this hole, but it's this hole. We'll look at it when it's done, but everything fits together nicely, so. I guess worst case scenario, just don't don't snap it into the chassis anywhere until you are all done. And because uh, I I was worried I didn't have enough room or that it was gonna rub up here on the chassis, but it actually turned out uh, perfect once I was done. So what else am I rambling about? I'm probably just still trying to figure out if I pulled it out all the way. <clears throat> yeah, so that's going to be what secures it to the chassis. And they tell you uh, 
pretty much where the tape was. You can see that clean spot. Um, they give you a measurement. It's like 145 millimeters or something. Um, and that, that is where that is going to belong. And of course, I have it wrong here, so don't listen to me. I think it's that big hole. But we'll, we'll look in the end. Uh, yep, super thumbs. So you've got two hangers that you have to get undone. And uh, maybe, unlike me, you have the right tool to be able to do it. There we go. I finally figured out where that goes. I guess I'm saying it looks like it won't rub, or it looks like it will rub. I don't know. I'm saying lots of things. Oh, am I gonna? Am I gonna get it? Look at that. Oh yeah, he, he's he's getting the the fists of fury ready. Okay, I'm gonna have to add the grunting sound effects and some of the f bombs. I I really hate exhaust hangers. Um, mine were actually in pretty good shape. Still supple, but I didn't think there was a chance in hell I was gonna get them off, and then suddenly I just got them off. <laughs> So, oh, what happened? Oh, what happened? Okay, I was bitching. Then what? Sorry, I just have to relive this moment here. Because, you know, you could spend an hour. No, okay, they just magically came off. No explanation. <laughs> okay, whatever. Uh, there's the yellow one. It's in front of the front of the what passenger passenger wheel, I think. Meh. Anyway, you'll find it. Struggle, struggle. Look at that, no hope. And then somehow it's just off of there. I did it with my hands. Oh, I lied. There we go. <laughs> I, used, I used a pry bar on that one. Look how that's just sprung in there all by itself. Okay, it's off. It was super hot that day. I think I shaved in the middle of doing this because I was just so damn hot. Okay, this is just... Oh. Okay, the heat shield. So yeah, I guess I really didn't capture it, but I take off the four bolts and then, and then lift it out in this direction. It'll, it'll come out. Now here... Um, I had an engine hoist. Uh, hopefully, you have friends because you, it's really, really. This is the only way I could think of doing it, where the goal was to hang hang a strap at the level this will ultimately be at, which is about right here, and then uh, and then I could at least push up on this side. Uh, and this would be stable and nothing can really fall. So the only piece I need to worry about is the side I'm working on falling on me. Just, I don't know, make friends. Because that was a huge pain. And I had to adjust that height a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so pretty much this is how I did it. I just push, push, push. I'm probably cussing up a storm here, but just push, 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 and then it, it just kind of fell into place. And uh, I tried to start something there, and again, check your bolts. That bolt went away, and I couldn't find it. It was gone forever. 
pretty sure I ran out of strength. There's got to be a better way. Oh, there's your problem. Using the power tools. Same thing on the other side. Get one bolt in there. Again, I cannot stress enough. Check the bolts before you do this. Uh, get your threads clean. Verify you've got the right bolts. Um, I, I think I was lucky that I didn't break one of those inner inner nuts off the frame. And, uh, you know, in the end, whatever happened, whether I cross-threaded that inner softer bolt or, you know, nut, or whether I just had, what, 10 years of, well, 14 years of rust, you know, whatever the case may be, uh, just deal with that before you do this. And make sure it's right. And if it's not right, get the right bolt. Because you do not want one of those inner nuts coming unwelded uh, in the chassis. You're just going to be completely screwed. So these are just, yeah. There we go. So I was looking for... <laughs> I was looking for uh, to see if I had a tap that was of the right size, and I did not. So had I do had I to do this again, yeah, I would have chased that thread 100% before I even started this job. Uh, I had a new toy, so I ended up using that to uh, get the bolts down, and you can see like that one went in fine. And uh, this one did not, and another one did not, and I swear I only crossed if if I cross threaded any of them, it was only the first one because I was struggling to to get this thing hung, you know. But the rest I put in with my hands. I got a couple twists in, so probably just chasing the thread is what was needed. Uh, but it was bad. Not gonna lie, and I got lucky. So if I hadn't said it enough, chase them. Um, yeah, so we're physically mounted, and then you just follow the instructions to torque the inside and then the outsides, I believe, is what the uh, torque, they're, I think that's what they said to do, they tell you. And... Oh yeah, I got a sweet deal on a a decent uh, torque wrench, Carlisle, last year. My old torque wrench is a Craftsman, and I still use it, but uh, the Carlisle has a much wider range, and I couldn't resist it for $105 at Napa, not a sponsor. So these these are the two center 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 doodads. Again, I put that little monster on it. I I think that thing can do 200 foot pounds or something. <laughs> um, and then here I I did finally uh, back them off and torque them up because again I'm embarrassed. I completely probably butchered those things, but you can learn from my experience. Um, the one thing about this fancy, well, the thing I like about this is that you've got a little bit of give here, even though that, that's going to change your specs a little bit. But honestly, I don't take torquing that seriously. Um, it, But it also doesn't give you what torque it took to break off a bolt. But otherwise, really like this thing. Batteries have never died. You know, I've had it, I don't know, a year or two, I think. And... Uh, and like I said, it can go down to much wider range on the low side. Um, so it was useful, even though it's kind of big, it was useful for uh, uh, oil pans and stuff like that. Because I just, I don't have a lot of, well, I've only recently gotten the tools. <laughs> um, so yeah, Carlisle, Napa. They run killer deals sometimes. Uh, yep, 
and put that guy back on same way it came off it's easy it should go in super easy so you can totally take it in and out oh here yeah like I saw some people saying they couldn't take it out or didn't take it out or but just take it out it's four bolts and it it really does just slide in there see how easy <laughs> like I said it just goes right in there we go see it just goes right in see so don't be lazy just take it out it's easier uh, the little bolts are a pain though and one of them in particular was a pain and this one of the rare cases where that little tool was the right tool I, I don't particularly like that tool but uh, it turned out to be the right one for that because a ratchet couldn't reach some of that stuff that one in particular was a pain hangers went on easy super easy with just my bare mitts there we go I was probably pitching a fit about that guy he, he really that he was a pain uh, so again OEM system stuff just bolts right up you've got two screws here to secure that to the bar and uh, actually when I bought this I couldn't have you know I didn't even have the welder I would, like I wouldn't have been able to modify anything so for sure bought OEM but I guess also maybe for insurance reasons I figured OEM was better um, these little husky tools I've been super impressed with in fact I swapped out the nut drivers that I had uh, I, I I bought a, a, a rather decent sized cobalt set uh, like their professional series I, I got it used on Craigslist and there was big wrenches and all, you know just a full complement of of wrenches and sockets and uh, and I had a set of button drivers but I really like these husky ones because they get thick like that um, you know, this is a, probably a 10 millimeter or something, and it's big and thick, so you can run a nut down on a long screw. Um, yeah, uh, super impressed with just those. <laughs> I've, I've been impressed with some of the Husky stuff. Uh, yep, yeah, so this is pretty straightforward. Just get that guy hooked up. Those are your future. You're not going to be towing a lot with the ridge line. <laughs> but, God, I, I love this track otherwise. <clears throat> okay, so there's our pigtail out of the way. Uh,. Let's listen to the struggle. Hundred and forty five millimeters. Okay. Sound's not coming over the thing anyway. Um yeah, so you re remove that cap and I guess the replacement is this thing right here for whatever that was. Not really clear. Um but you just plug that joker in. That thing was kind of be in a pain to maybe remove it before you put the thing on uh, yeah yeah see I struggled that cap was in good shape um, just make sure everything's clean in there it probably is so again they tucked it way up in the chassis so boink and you are connected. Oh, but you're not done because we have a whole thing to do under the hood of the car now. Uh, what's that? What was that? 
Oh, yeah. That's some sort of little... Okay, yeah. That's the connector to press, press that guy in. See? Every hole has a little piece of thought behind it. So I think if I were a tech, you know, the first one of these would take me, what, two hours? But then I think I think I could do one of these, and especially if I had a friend. I, I could probably do it in 40 minutes, something like that. Everything just pressed together. Uh, I'm pausing here because I want to see where that piece actually fits in. It wasn't super apparent to me, and I'm not good at puzzles. There it is. Yeah, I think it just goes on the side there. Yep. Like that. And push it in. Okay, good enough. Got your little clean cable install, and we're all done back there. Uh, so you got those fuses. And I think we've run out of parts otherwise. And again, I'm missing this cap, which is a major bummer. I, I think I might try to get it because I'd much rather have the proper reference under the hood. You know, when I blow a fuse, that's what I'm going to need to do. Um, I, I really had to just count what was there and then just make sure I put these fuses in, in the right order. So, whatever. It, I mean, it's not rocket science, but it also was a little unnerving not to have that reference and have to read it on a piece of paper. So, that is your fuse panel that we're going to modify. Again, you should have a new top, so that should you should be able to just throw that away and replace it with the new top. Uh, otherwise... I'm probably bitching here. Otherwise, you're just going to need to <laughs> look at the piece of paper, count your fuses, don't screw up. I think I did screw up. I think I put them in wrong. And then I put them in right. So, kind of aggravating. But that was that and the missing relay were the only thing wrong with the kit I bought. And I, I want to say it was 300, but I, I don't actually remember. But that that feels about right. <laughs> Me being paranoid. And then I decided to put that piece of paper in the glove box. And I think that is it. Oh, put the dash back together. Bump, bump over each little piece. Should should pop in there. That whole dash pops together nicely. Um, I had a little piece of rubber that needed to be over that piece, so I'm just prying it and putting it back over that piece. That was like in the door, door seal or whatever. And. didn't have a battery post cleaner so we just went for it and there you go um the only thing i didn't cover ugh, my radio is reset and it's obnoxious love that radio otherwise but that's obnoxious Okay, so I think that's it. So the only thing I didn't cover, which I will track down a picture of, is uh, when it comes time to wire in the, uh, if you ha if you you know want to run a, a brake controller uh, to run trailer brakes, there is another connector 
that is wrapped in blue tape that I believe is just uh, above the emergency brake, you know, the foot brake. Uh, you just follow that up the harness and there will be another connector that is sitting there. And I'm going to go grab a picture of that right now, I think, assuming I can see it without pulling my whole dash apart. Um, but it, it, yeah, it seemed like people had trouble finding the original connectors. Uh, and then, and then no, nothing in the instructions tell you about how to hook up a trailer brake. So, you know, because obviously you need to adjust. <laughs> you need to be able to adjust the trailer brake. So whatever that controller is doing that is part of the OEM stuff is not trailer brakes. Um, so, that yeah, there, there's a separate connector. So I'm going to go snap a picture of that best I can. Uh, otherwise, it is, it is above the... emergency brake and you just keep following up the side of that wall and you will see it wrapped in blue tape. That's it.